What is your favorite Drupal superpower? My favorite Drupal superpower? To sit at a client meeting and whatever the client tells me, I know we can build it. Yeah? Yeah. So, hi. Yeah? yeah? Right? Yes. Yeah. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast Drupal Technology, Community, and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. Once again, at Drupal Developer Days, Seged, Hungary, I am talking with Michael Schmidt Hi, from Zürich. Uh, you are the C. T.O. of Amazy Labs. Exactly. What version of Drupal did you first install? Five. Five. Yes. Talk about how Drupal has changed uh, since then. A lot. It's, um, I guess the biggest change is from being a tool which was more like hacky. Everybody used it in their own way. It was a lot of, I would say, kindergarten maybe a bit. So it's a lot of like in the beginning. And then with six, it changed already, and now with seven, definitely, definitely, it looks to me like a tool where people put a lot of brain work in there, that it is a really cool tool that you can build almost everything, and everything is built that you can configure it on the side, you don't need to code a lot, which means that we only actually have three backend developers out of 12, and all others are mostly like using modules, and I think that's one of the fu fundamental thing that people love and hate about Drupal, that it, that you can, basically a site builder can build a whole site. Um, and on, on the underlining part in the backend, it got much stronger, more used of common um, patterns, how to program. What so is forth. your favorite thing about Drupal? Drupal, it's a community. I think it's so much for like people knowing each other, people meeting each other, not only working together but also having fun, having big discussions, long discussions, endless light discussions, but also having a beer at the same time, talking to people about their private lives, meeting them, seeing them. So uh, for me it's not, it's a tool which is really great, so I really like Drupal for using it every day to build websites for our customers. But I think the really important part is that I actually know the people which built that stuff. Mm. So I, I remember people that whatever I see, like their commit messages somewhere, so I know who that person is. I can talk to the people if I have an issue. I definitely found somebody online in IRC which maybe had the problem once. And it's just all about the personal stuff behind it. Would it be fair to say that when a client hires you for a Drupal project, they're actually hiring about 20,000 yes. people, developers at the same time? Yes, and actually use that. So in DrupalCon um, Copenhagen, we had a really good group picture where you saw like all these 2,500 or like 2,000 people on it. And actually use that in pitches to say like, like, so we show a picture of all our customers, and uh, sorry, of all our employees, and then we changed the picture in like of all the pictures saying, actually, that's what you hire for. And I think that's really what the, like, the customers realize, what does open source mean? Because first, um, you know the people who worked on it. That's like in proprietary software, you, can, you don't know who worked on it. And secondly, the group is so big and it's so many people with having so many different issues, but all working together to try to do that one thing, that's open source for me. What's been... Um the most surprising thing that's happened as a, being in an open source business? Hmm. I think what surprises me still is that people specific or like customers now specifically come to us and ask us that they want to use Drupal. So they already do the CMS evaluations and all that stuff already happens. And the craziest part is that when the customers not only um, want to use it as, as a tool, they also want to invest. So we have customers where we tell them, look, this specific feature does not exist yet. Um, we can build it for you and it will maybe take one day of work, but it won't be test covered, it won't be like tested by the community, etc. So it in totally takes three days to build the whole thing that somebody else also can use it. And they say, yes, we invest the time. 
So most of the time we say, then, okay, let's make 50-50. So awesome Amazon Labs pays one and a half days and the customer pays one and a half days. So he actually pays more than if you would just request that only feature specifically for him, specific of his website build. But he says, no, let's do it for the community because we, we, we use so much of the community already. Let's give stuff back. And that's one thing I would not have thought in the beginning that this happens and that, from our customers. That's a great way for, for you as Amazing Labs to invest in yes. in your tool set as well, yes, right. And I like that you get your clients invested as well. They feel it's 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 theirs as yeah. well, right? They yeah. have do do you see them having an emotional bond somehow because of that investment that they made? Are they more connected to it somehow? Yes, yeah, um, definitely. With um, just they are really interested in it. They first feel that we are really passionate about that. But we try to give this passion also to our customers and they also kind of get a, a, a bonding to it. And the craziest thing that actually happened, I just remember at one point, a customer walked at me at the Drupal camp and I didn't know that he's there. So I mentioned it in a meeting at one time saying, yeah, by the way, next week in Vienna, there is a Drupal camp. Why not? I mean, if you want to. And I, he never told me. And then, then I'm there and he walks to me and says, like, I just learned about that stuff. So... And I think that's really cool that suddenly also your customers um, go in and in the community and realize what happens there and gets the feeling that we have about Drupal. Wow. As a developer, what are you most excited about in Drupal 8? As a developer, I think that we now use a lot of patterns that other software uses as well. Because Drupal 8... Coming from a back-end point of view, if you like talked as a developer, like going to a PHP camp or whatever, you were like, you didn't really say that you do Drupal. You more said like, I do PHP, but you never said like, I'm Drupal. Because Drupal was all the time this hook stuff and nobody understood it. Others said like, you don't even use the patterns that everybody else uses. And yes, you use PHP, but it's PHP Drupal, it's something else. But now with Drupal 8, it's really like, I want to go there and saying, look, we use Drupal. It's all, not all of it, but most of it is object oriented. We use symphony parts. We MVC. Do now, yes, it's MVC. It's, um, we have all these patterns. We have PSR0 or even PSR4. So it's all these things that, that, that makes the whole PHP community a community. And now we are part of it. And before we used to be just the outsiders and nobody really cared about us. Uh -huh. As a business person running a Drupal business, what do you see coming in Drupal 8 that is going to benefit you and, and how is that going to benefit you? Um, I think first that we are more integratable in other systems and there's in two ways. First in actual APIs, so the whole REST interface, whatever, because I mean we see it in the Internet of Things, we see it in our customer projects. We used to do maybe one integration with like another blog. But now we have integrations to CRMs, we get data from somewhere else, we push data to somewhere else. They want to have like updates on their iPhones and all these things. And the underlying technology is now baked into Drupal. So I think it's much more where like customers came to us and said like, can you do that? Can you do that? It was like, yeah, but I, so like in my head, they're always like, yeah, maybe we have feeds. So do we use migrate? Do we use services? What do we use? And it used, I mean, we, did all the stuff we ever wanted to do with customers, it was just hard right. because there were so many different ways. And now it's like baked in and done, and I think in the right way. So Drupal is fully restful internally and yes. externally. It is from the ground up, it is built to ingest any data, web services, whatever, and output as a service, exactly whatever else it is, yes. in any format. And yes. that's out of the box instead of using modules that maybe don't work with each other and then you have multilingual issues because the module didn't know about long multilingual all things that you can fix but it's just there and I think that allows us as not like thinking in a box of saying we can build websites I think we can build like whole systems whatever the system is is it now whatever a system that drives like stuff that we build is um, for Swiss television, like voting systems that maybe like people actually can vote via telephone, that the voting is recorded, like that somebody calls and that sends somebody to the Drupal saying that the Drupal knows somebody called in and then you can display it on the television, which is again another system, but Drupal is responsible to get like votes via SMS, via text message, via Twitter maybe, via phone. It's just like this 
box that can handle all that stuff. And I feel more empowered to do that because we use the right tools and it's done by the core team. And I know that when it's done by the core team, I see it every day working in it well. The, the output is really great. And the other point I really think is Drupal as a business owner is that I, I don't know yet, but I really hope that it's easier to find people that can just help us. Because it's still, especially in Switzerland, um, we have a lot of non-PHP developers. So most of the developers are, um, they, they use PHP, but more in the side project. But the really big stuff happens in Java and .NET still. But just because now we use patterns that are used to Java, patterns that are used to .NET, object-oriented programming, I hope that it's easier for people to come in and help us building sites. Or maybe even let's say like allow them writing modules. Because at the end, I'm interested in efficiency for the customer. I'm not interested to write every single module myself. If the customer or if not an external partner can write a module integration for Drupal, which is fully object oriented, why not doing that? Because mm. we're more efficient. And I hope if using all these patterns, I hope that will be possible. So let's turn that question on its head. Yeah. As a Drupal business person, yeah. how is Drupal 8 going to benefit your clients? I think at the beginning it won't. So what we say right now is, I mean, don't build sites right now in 8. We're a bit crazy and do that for one of our sites right now. But um, it's not at the stage where we can do already stuff. But what we say is like, when you anyway plan to rebuild or like restructure your site, that's the right point to bring Drupal 8 in because you have to build the whole stuff anyway. Again, and you have to migrate. So all the things that you would think about, it's there. So um, I, that's maybe one of the things, like how do we get the customer there? That's maybe more the scary part. We should probably underscore at this point that there is nothing wrong with having a Drupal 7 site exactly. now yes. and for a few years. years. Yes, what I tell my customers, the next three years is how I see it is totally fine. We still have Drupal 6 sites running every day, serving multiple thousands of hits per day because it works. It's still security checked. As long as Drupal 8 is not out, the security team is still focused on Drupal 6. So it's, it's there and it works. It's nothing bad in running it. So why should we just use the same thing for Drupal 7 as well? So I believe, and that's what I tell my customers, the next, seven, next three years, so Drupal 7 will most probably be fine. We'll see if it really is the way, but that's what we think right now. Um, yeah. But okay. where the customers can um, um, use it, I guess their websites will be less expensive. Like if they want to build really big websites, like integrations, as I said, with all the rest stuff, it's just already there. And we will use less time to fix stuff, to find out things, because yeah, it's just used on technologies that is used or used somewhere else. So integrations with Drupal with other sites will be faster done. And I think that's a really big advantage for us. Okay, and maybe they get more features for yes. the same budget. Exactly, because we work on a budget. So they come to us and say like, we have this amount of money. And at the end, there is a specific stuff you can do. And if the whole integration part now takes instead of 40 days, it takes only 20 days. You have 20 other days to maybe make the website more responsive, to build another feature, to test it better, I don't know, whatever. The customer can decide, so we are fast in specific parts. How do you feel about Drupal 8 as a sort of a unification point between so many open source projects and communities now? Good question. Um, I think with the move for Drupal, they decided we will use Symfony components. Um, I think that was a bold move in the beginning because everybody was scared, saying like, what? wait, so now, now we depend on them? Like, if they break something, we will be broken? Or like, how do we work with, like, stuff? But if you look at that in, like, other programming languages, like if Ruby, that's so common that you use modules of others. Like, if you need a JSON interpreter, if you need whatever there is, you crunch up functions, whatever, there is a module for that. So it's more like putting things together, that's what we already do inside of the Drupal community with all our modules, but why shouldn't we use a module of Symfony? Why shouldn't we use a module of Send? Or something else, which is maybe not even a framework, just somebody wrote a really cool PHP stuff. Mm. So why not using that? And I think with the move to say, okay, Drupal uses Symfony, that was like at the time where the whole community realized suddenly, 
we are a PHP community. Before it was like, okay, we have like PHP Nuke, which was like these bad people, and then we have BB Board, and it's like, they never talked to each other, they hated each other because they, they both did forums, or for like um, sites like that, and they said like, that's bad. And then now I guess these people realize, we both use PHP, so why don't we use work together as a PHP community and go not against others, but like go out there against ASP, against Ruby, and say like we will use each other's tools, we help each other, we are a community. And I think that's definitely the things that you see that suddenly at DrupalCon, you have people walking around never used Drupal before, but they're Symphony Core developers. Right. And that's like one that's like I think that's really cool for the whole community to suddenly work together. And I'm also yeah. running into Drupalists at Symphony community events. So yeah. so you know we're, we're, we're breaking down some barriers here. We're making some friends. It's like the social composer, yeah. right? Exa yeah, social composer. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for Thank taking you. the time. You're welcome. To talk with me. Excellent.